Something has changed in the matrix. Hello and welcome to today's live impressions and Q&A of the Astell and Kern Khan Kilobuck digital audio player. If you're just joining me now for the live stream, welcome. If you're one of the refugees from the um, previous technical error, come in, come in, please. Um, so, what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to give you my first impressions and also answer any chat questions you have about the Astell and Kern Khan. And yes, Mike, I did just buy this. If it is a live stream, I can read comments and chat. So, um, pop your chats in. There's also this new YouTube super chat feature, which I'm not entirely sure how it works. But if you ever wanted to support the channel as a one time thing, um, because, uh, you know, recurring payments like Patreon don't work for you, pop in a super chat and apparently you kick YouTube a few bucks and then I get a few bucks. Uh, and in doing so, you're going to help me do something that I said I was going to do. And I'm going to lay this out right from the beginning. I'm really sorry to anyone who is really hoping to see a Fio X5 III review because I, I was sort of really excited as well. I wanted to get, um, I wanted to get one of those new, uh, that wanted to get one of the red ones because honestly they look amazing. The thing is, uh, the reason why I ended up getting the Khan and I'm going to have to delay the Fio a little bit is because I saw that the local audio store in Sydney, Len Wallace does secondhand, um, buying and trading and that sort of thing. So I, um, took an old subwoofer that I have that I've always been meaning to sell, but I'm not really comfortable with people, you know, coming to my place and having a look at it. Um, I always wanted to sell uh, the subwoofer. So I took it off to Len Wallace, big, big, heavy thing, um, 10 inch sealed sub. When I got to Len Wallace, they said, we don't really do cash in hand for secondhand stuff, um, which is fair enough. Uh, what they do is they off a trade in. So what I can do is I can give you 300 bucks for the subwoofer. If you want to trade in for something like just trade in credit, or, you know, if you want to buy something, I'll give you 500 bucks for the subwoofer and 500 was actually not a bad deal for the subwoofer because that's basically the most that I could get for that subwoofer on Gumtree. And I had to put up with people coming to my house and sort of lowballing me, um, which didn't sound like a fun thing. So I went, okay, all right, well, what do you sell? One of the things they sold was the Astell and Kern line of digital audio players. And I was like, well, order me a Khan. Because I've heard about this thing. Um, and right now, uh, the Khan actually fills a few gaps in my setup. So I'll tell you now uh, what the Khan actually does. So this is a $1,000 audio player, which seems insane. To me, it seems insane. If you had told me like, um, you know, a year or two ago that you're going to buy a $1,000 audio player or $864 after trading, I should say, um, I would say you're joking. But the thing is, the funny thing is I don't have a desktop set up at the moment. Number one, I go between two computers. Um, so I kind of don't have a desktop set up for either of those computers. Um, no, no real audio output apart from the inbuilt outputs. Um, so what it is with the with the Khan is that it's an audio player, number one. It's also a DAC slash amp. You can connect it to your computer and use it as an external DAC slash amp. Number three, it's really, really high output power. So on the balanced outputs, I think you can put out eight volts. I've heard reports of people driving Sennheiser HD 800s off it. Um, I can confirm that even on the unbalanced output, which actually is that one, sorry, the unbalanced, the balanced output is this one. I can confirm that it will drive my 470 ohm um, R70X out of the unbalanced output, no problem, right up to an excruciating volume. And that is why the Khan is so big. This thing is big and heavy for a size comparison. Here's my iPhone 5 SE. And you know like that thing where you get um, pigs 
in, in, in the stall and, and the mother pig might roll over and crush the, the baby pigs. That's exactly um, what the Khan is. It is a monster. And I've never sort of been super keen on Astell and Kern players because they've always seemed sort of expensive to me and really sharp just to hold, horrible to hold because they're just covered in sharp edges. Um, this one is clumsy and just outright hilarious looking. Like to me, it's sort of endearing in the way that it is so huge and ugly and brutal, almost like something out of Alien. Um, like a, you know, if you use this as an industrial, like a sci-fi, a really cheap sci-fi plot um, prop, and you can imagine it going through space um, with a black background, and you can do a 2001 Space Odyssey with this thing. It is, it is chunky. Thank you so much, Joshua, um, for trying out that super chat feature. It definitely works. So it comes up as a funny color for me. It comes up as blue. That's really cool. Thanks a lot for that, Josh. And um, so what Josh has just done is this, he's, um, he's kicked in two bucks for the super chat feature, which I haven't tried yet, but um, now, now I've tried. So there you go. Um, it's awesome. Uh, so basically, if you ever want to support the channel, you can pop in um, a super chat. Um, I'll be able to see your message in, in a bright color and also you help support the channel. So that's going to help me um, get the Fio X5 to compare with this, which I'm sort of excited about. So um, yeah, so I'm going to be able to feed the Stacks amplifier with this as a DAC. I'm going to be able to um, take this as a transport to audio stores like Minidisc uh, and be relatively sure that I'm going to have something that's going to have enough output power to drive anything that I plug into it. It's going to have a low output impedance, which, which it does, very low output impedance out of both of the outputs, which means that the output impedance will not interact with the impedance curve of the earphones or the headphones that I plug into it. So you won't end up with weird frequency response changes. Um, and um, it's going to mostly sit at my desk. This is not a portable. This is not a portable setup, right? This is my portable setup. This is what's going to live in my bag. Um, again, we get the, the pig rolling over and crushing the, the baby pig scenario. But uh, this is the A35 that's going to live in my bag. Um, and I won't forget to leave it out of my bag, which is nice. This is mostly going to live on my desk. The reason why I'm putting it on top of this book, by the way, is that I do not want to scratch the um, surface of this table with this, um, with this thing. Uh, I've ordered a case from, uh, made by MITRE from eBay, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, yeah, this is mostly just going to sit on the desk most of the time. Now, uh, Mike, a hi-fi guy, or hi-fi insider, said uh, he was surprised I didn't get the Sony because I did talk about getting the Sony um, WM1A. The reason why I went with the Khan is that the output power, I believe, on the Khan is rated for higher, which is nice. Uh, I appreciate that it can be used as a DAC and an amp with a computer because I don't believe that that is the case with the Sony. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm working on that assumption. Uh, and also Len Wallace doesn't sell the high-end Sony players, so I wouldn't get any trade in value uh, towards it with that subwoofer that I traded in. So, so it was a sort of, um, it was a sort of, you know, I'm not going to say it was an impulse purchase, but it was a sort of thing where I did not want to bring that subwoofer back home because it was heavy. So I was like, okay, well, let's do this. Um, let's, let's go, you know, and, and experience the amazing world of $1,000 digital audio players. Uh, okay, so let's talk a bit about the player itself. And again, this is a live chat. If you have any questions or comments, please pop them in and I will show you anything that you want to know about this player. So one thing I can say I like about it, the uh, scroll lag on the player is quite reasonable, right? It is not a, uh, you know, it's not 2017 smartphone fast. It's not that responsive, but it's better than my Sony A35. Um, and and it, it, it's reasonably fast. It doesn't really get in the way, which is really nice. I like the physical buttons and the physical layout. There's a play pause here. There's, you know, skip tracks and then there's a home button kind of deal here. That's actually sort of um, a little more convenient than the side buttons on the um, A35 that I have, a little easier to press. Uh, the volume control is nice. It's It's got um, 
a, a fair amount of steps to it. So that's really cool. Um, and it has a nice mechanism. I originally thought that this would feel pretty fragile because it looked like something that you could press in, but no, there's not much give to it. So overall build quality on this device is really nice, like you would expect for a thousand dollars, like you would hope anyway. Um, I like that with the interface to turn from high gain mode to normal gain mode um, is just, you know, a flick, one flick and one press. And what's nice is it, it will warn you um, we're going to change the volume so that you don't blow out your eardrums with the high gain. Really, really good on them. Um, and you can turn Wi-Fi, Bluetooth on, off, so you can do over-the-air firmware updates, which is kind of cool. That's the first thing I did when I took this out of the box. File transfers with a USB-C port are quite fast. That's really cool. Um, so overall, I think they've done a good job with the interface. Here are the things that I don't like about it right off the bat, I mean, just based on my first impressions. Number one, you cannot change the default desktop background, which I can't show you because we now have an album playing. But the default desktop background is a picture of a moon. You can't change it. I don't like it. I wish I could change it. I don't understand why they won't let me change it. It's $1,000. I paid $1,000 for it. Come on, let me do what I want to do with it. I, I don't know what's going on there. Um, the other thing is that minimum screen brightness. Now, it's really kind of hard to tell on this iPad camera, but the minimum screen brightness is too high, I think, because at the nighttime, when you look at the screen, it's too bright, hurts my eyes, I can't go to sleep. Um, I bought a, uh, a screen protector for it, uh, which is apparently gonna cut out blue light. I ordered that on eBay. Um, it came with two screen protectors in the box, but um, I messed up installing both of them because I'm terrible. I'm a terrible human being that can't install screen protectors. Uh, and I even tried the whole, you know, moist bath bathroom thing and everything like that. Uh, it didn't work out. So hopefully better luck with the one I just ordered. Um, I also ordered the leather case for it, which is kind of nice because I feel like that you could easily scratch any surface with this. Yeah, um, Visionary says, yeah, he forgot that UV blue filter screen protectors are a thing. They totally are. That's what I'm getting for this because you can't make the screen brightness go down any further. Um, the other thing that I'm not so keen on with this player, what was I going to say? Um, hmm, that's pretty much it that springs to mind immediately just in terms of interface and UI. I mean, you can certainly complain about it being heavy and ridiculous and just a brick, but to me, that's sort of what made me buy it in a way. Because I, I just, uh, I just, it's going to live on the desk, right? I want it to be big and solid and not move around and just be there. Uh, so, uh, Sefa asks a question about how you choose the right DAP. Honestly, and I'll move on to the sound of this. I, I'm not the best person to ask when it comes to um, amplifiers or daps and that's why I very rarely review them on my channel because honestly I read um, dap reviews and people talk about these amazing differences that they hear between daps and when I take them home and I try it and I think I hear a difference and then I plug them into an input switcher and switch between the two I most of the times do not hear much of a difference at all okay so you know I could tell you these things about what I think I'm hearing on the Khan compared to the A35. I could tell you about them, but if you put a gun to my head and say, you know, you think that you'll pass an A-B test with that, I'm not going to say I can. I bet you when I put them together, they'll sound kind of the same unless I plug something ridiculous into the A35 that the A35 cannot handle, whereas the Khan can. That's when I would expect to hear an audio difference, right? Because the output impedance on the Khan is a little lower. So basically, uh, what you would expect with the output impedance is that if you look at a, a graph of the impedance of a, say, an earphone or a headphone, if it goes from like 6 ohms all the way up to 50 ohms or 100 ohms, like something like the Audio-Technica ATH IMO2, that kind of earphone, if you plug it into something which has a high output impedance, it's going to sound weird because the, the, the sound of the player the sound of the earphone will begin to follow the impedance curve because of the interaction with the output impedance on the player. So you want something that has a low output impedance. And that basically is something like the Khan, 
the W1MA, they, they apparently have very low output impedances. Um, iPhones have fairly low output impedances, or at least previous ones. Um, this A35, I have not ever seen any measurement for the output impedance on the A35. Judging by my ear, I think it sounds like it has a relatively low um, output impedance because it doesn't sound weird with the IMO2. The things I can say about the output of the Khan is that it's very low noise, so if I plug my IMO2 into it, don't hear any hiss, which is really nice. I don't hear much hiss with the A35. This is already a big improvement over the previous Sony players that I've owned, but the Khan is pretty much to my ears just black. So that's really nice if you have sensitive earphones. Uh, it's very high output power, um, and I haven't even tried the balanced outputs on it. On the unbalanced outputs, you know, you can go way up. Um, I've not needed to go up above 100 for the earphone, the headphones that I've tried so far, and this thing goes up to 150, so wow. Um, the other thing that I can say about the sound, I mean, if you had to get, if you, if you, thank you so much, Lewis has just chucked in 10 euros, wow, 10 euros, that's like 100 Australian dollars. Um, thank you so much for that. Uh, and he says live streams every day. Well, um, you know, part of the experiment that I'm doing with the iPad is seeing how much easier it is to do a live stream. And I can tell you right now, uh, it is easier to do a live stream on an iPad. Um, uh, because there's like, instead of like four different devices in the chain, I can have one device, cellular modem, um, high, uh, you know, high upload bandwidth, uh, as long as you don't screw up like I did earlier, um, you, 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 I'm actually finding this a pretty good setup. So you can look forward, I think, to more, um, to more live stream videos like this. Let me know in the comments if you like this setup. I actually am surprised because this is not like the iPad as a macro lens, but we're getting pretty good detail. But let, you, let me know what you think of it. Um, what I would say, yeah, is, is in, in terms of sound, I feel like maybe the sound stage is a little wider than it is on the A35, which is nice. And the bass feels a little more solid. The whole thing, look, the whole thing is sound, it sounds really good. Um, and and I, can't, I can't really say much more than that, right? I, I don't wanna say much more than that without sounding like I'm making stuff up. Uh, Medicine asks, um, yeah, what's the deal with the Super Chat? So basically, it's like, I think they borrowed it from Twitch or some of those Chinese um, live streaming apps. It's like a, a Super Chat feature. So if you ever want, you can just kick in a few dollars into the uh, Super Chat and I will be extremely grateful. As I said, I really wanted to compare this against the Theo X5. Um, uh, the, uh, I really wanted to compare it to the Theo X5 um, so, uh, yeah, if, if, if you want to kick in some money on Patreon or even on the Super Chats, that would be really cool because I'm going to be able to uh, make, a, make a useful comparison between these two players. The interesting thing about the Fio X5 is that it uses the same DAC chip, the same DAC chip as the, um, as the, the Khan, except that it has two of them and it costs about half the price. So you get, you know, two times the DAP. Um, four times the DAP even. No, um, I, I'd be very interested to see how it compares because of course I can't imagine the amplifier module is as strong as it is on the Khan compared to the Fio because the Khan is a brick. I'm, I'm gonna put this down because I'm gonna drop it and just, just destroy my desk with it. Uh, there was an earlier comment from someone that I don't remember the username, but it was, uh, they were expressing confusion uh, about my stance on DAPs. Look. As I said before, um, this is this is my sort of portable DAP. Now, I, I have in the past said that I prefer to use just my iPhone. The thing is, as iPhones have kind of, as my iPhone has sort of changed in terms of like the Apple Music stuff and, and what I'm doing on it, I'm finding that my iPhone as a DAP is sort of frustrating because when I'm playing music and I'm looking, browsing on the internet, uh, some website will decide to autoplay and then 
just take over the audio channel even if there's no video playing and then the music stops it's very frustrating so something tiny like this sony i don't mind getting um, because it just fits in the pocket um, and i can have my music on there and be pretty happy with that right this khan the khan to me i'm not treating this really as a portable player i do not expect to put this in my pocket I do not have any pockets that can accommodate this, except for some of my pajama pockets or sweatpant pockets. Uh, this thing is a monster. It's mostly going to live at home, mostly going to live on the desk. I'm going to bring it out occasionally when I know that I'm going to have to do some critical listening. Maybe if I take it to mini disc or to some other audio store, that's when um, I want to go with the Khan. Uh, but most of the times, this is actually a desktop transportable, like a desktop replacement transport. And that's how I'm going to use it. Uh, and also as a DAC for uh, my laptop, which is cool. So we've gone for 20 minutes. What I'm going to do now is for the next five minutes, I'm just going to um, respond to your live chats uh, and um, sort of wrap up any questions you might still have about the Khan. Keep an eagle eye on that corner of the screen. Uh, again, uh, thanks for everyone who's joined in on the live stream. If you want to kick in a super chat, that would be awesome. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about how the Khan works or anything like that. So Matt Dixon asks, Matt Dickinson asks, do you feel you get enough power from the Sony? I feel like with IEMs, with, with earphones or with most of my portable headphones, I get adequate amounts of power with the Sony. I'm perfectly happy with the output power of the Sony um, in those circumstances. I don't think like something like a, a home use plugging in a fear, uh, sorry, an, an Audio-Technica R70X or like a higher impedance headphone like that, like a, like a Bayer Dynamic DT770, 250 ohms. I do not think that it is reasonable to expect the Sony to drive it. I can listen to it. I can um, get volume out of it, but I would assume it's not something that I can hear, honestly. I'm not going to say I can hear the rising distortion levels, but certainly as you um, as you load an output more and more, you would expect to see um, issues with distortion and with power output. And that's that's uh, that's the idea with the Khan here. It's the idea that I'll get, I'll be relatively um, confident that I will get uh, good good output. Now, Robert asks the battery life on both. How does it compare? The funny thing is that the Sony, it's quoted for the same amount of battery life as my old A15 player. Um, I would say the battery life on the, the, the Sony is worse than my old A15, only because the standby time is worse. So when I'm not using it, it seems to drain power a lot more quickly because with the old A15 I had, you could not use it for a week and pick it up again and it would be full battery. If you don't use this for a week, it will drain half the battery sitting by itself. But still, it's rated for up to 40 hours of battery life on like standard MP3s. I'm very happy with the battery life um, on the Sony. No real complaints, it's just less than my A15. The Khan I think is rated for less than the Sony despite having a much larger battery. It's got a 6,000 milliamp battery. I think you can even charge external devices with a USB-C port. Um, it's got a much larger um, battery, but it doesn't have it, it doesn't have as long a battery life. And I'm not sure why that might be. It might simply be because on the Sony they use Class D digital amplifiers, um, which use a lot less energy. Uh, with the Khan. I am assuming that this is not class D. Um, I am assuming that this is class AB or even just class A. No idea. Um, I do not know if there are specs listed about that. Please correct me in the chat if you know the answer. But that sort of explains to me why you might get um, you might get a big difference in in terms of battery life despite having a much larger battery. And of course, the screen is larger as well. One thing I would say I didn't mention before. I think the screen on the A35 is better, which is a bit of a disappointment. Don't know if it turns up on camera, but the screen on the Sony has higher contrast. The blacks are, are darker, as you can see. Don't know if it really shows up. It's less reflective. There's less of an air gap between the glass and the display. So people said that the Khan is sort of like cutting corners for A and K. Um, 
honestly, I don't think you should cut corners on a $1,000 device, but hey, whatever, that's your product strategy. Uh, the, the screen has a bit of black light, backlight bleed. You can't see it right now. If I turn off all the lights, you can see a bit of backlight bleed on the top and the bottom. The minimum screen brightness is too high. That's another problem that I have with it. The, the minimum screen brightness is way too high, um, which I'm not super keen about because when you use it at night, it's a little, it's a little glary. But it's not a terrible screen. It just could be better. Uh, okay. So I think um, we're at 25 minutes. I'm going to wrap up the live stream today and I'm going to do some more uh, listening with the Khan. Let me know uh, what you think of this setup for the live streaming, number one. And number two, you know, your thoughts about the Khan or anything like that. Uh, and I will get back to you with some flesh out impressions. And again, I would love to do a comparison with a Fio X5. I think I might have to wait a month to do that, a month or two months even. If you want to see that earlier, I really, um, I really would appreciate it if you want to kick in a few dollars I have either via a super chat right now, which would be like a one-time thing, or um, join up on Patreon on patreon.com slash Lachlan Likes a Thing and you get access to the Discord server and you can have a chat with us. Thank you so much for joining in and I'll see you later. Bye.